Chris. Mm. How are you? Robert, Robert, Robert. I. It's been um, another week, and here we are. It's another weekly dose. It's slightly more than did a week, you come, Did you come up with a new name yet? For weekly dose? Yeah, you were said you were going to think of a new oh, name. I haven't yet, Rob. I've been so flat out. I wish I could... I wish I could flat out doing what? Working. You've been working? You've been working too, babes. You and I have both been working. We're sticking it to the. We're sticking it to the, the van. To universal credit. Yeah, in your face, universal credit. You ain't got me. Wacka wacka wacka. Yet. <laughs> There's always time, isn't there, Rob? It's always the next lockdown. There's always time. See if they can get us then. But happy Valentine's Day, Rob. Happy Valentine's Day, Christopher. Thanks. I'm not wearing any pants. <laughs> I'm wearing this shirt and nothing else. Are you talking about American pants or Canadian pants or British pants or Irish pants? Everything below the waist. It's gone. <laughs> yeah. I don't I wouldn't be adverse to saying a bit of that, Rob, before you. I think it's very warm in here. I think it. Of course, we can't tell because you're, you're don't want to stand up there and touch the same. Do I do? We we stand up and touch your head, and head, shoulders, knees, and toes, knees and toes. We could do that differently if you want. We can get a wee bit more um, mature with that one if you want. Nah, let's not. Although the ratings might go up ever so slightly, or maybe down. Why is that? Well, there's maybe some. People have some sort of like a fetish for strange, strange mis pants. misshapen bodies. <laughs> so Chris, it's been a interesting week. Really? In the news. Mm. Yeah. News news. Some or interesting stuff. Photo news. Photo news. I don't know where you get this photo Why, news from. Why is there something else besides photo news? No, but I, did. I, I don't know. I, I like Google photo news. I'll be honest, Rob. That's not a good start. Are you yawning? Rob, I am not getting any sleep. You yawning? Loon, well, I'm getting in more... In the microphone? I'm getting more sleep than Leah. Loon is cray cray. That's all I can say. Hey, you know what they say. Yeah. Like father, like son. Yeah. True enough, never thought of that. That maybe bond from. again. We could bond yeah. with that one. Rob, what sort of news? Your your tech news. That's what you're saying. Tech news. What sort of news? Mm -hmm. uh, no, there's more like legal news and some historical news. Some interesting stuff. You want to hear something? I want to hear something. Should we dive right in? Jump, get, jump, walk up that diving board. Put your pants back on, and jump in. <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't want to do a cannonball with no pants on. No. I wouldn't want to see it. That, that, would, that, would, that would be very sore. You're very saucy tonight. Must be fun. So remember we talked a couple of weeks ago about LeBron James, the basketball player? Yeah. And he used a photographer's image of himself. Yeah. And the photographer sued him. And LeBron James countersued for a million dollars. Sue his ass. Yeah. Mm, 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 mm. Only a million? Yeah. So, all parties were supposed to show up in court. Mm -hmm. And the photographer's there. And then the attorney is there. But there's no LeBron James. LeBron didn't show up because it was an imposition to him to go to court. Wow. So, the lawsuit got settled. Oh, really? I'll let you. I'll let you guess which way it went. Wow, <laughs> I'm thinking. Because this is what the judge said. After he heard that it was an imposition on LeBron's time, he said he brought these counterclaims, and he has to be prepared to litigate them. <laughs> What did LeBron, what was he thinking, Rob? What was well, he was thinking, he was thinking that, you know, I'll let my lawyer take care of it. What, what do I need to be there for? Well, he doesn't need a million quid. That's why. No. So the judge goes, well, why the hell isn't he here? Yeah. 
So if he's not here, it's contemptuous. How, yeah, it's it's kind of contempt, mm -hmm. you know, like, mm -hmm. and it, it, you know, it's kind of an insult that you know the court isn't worthy of his time. So no doubt, mm, that's which way the the judge decided. And, uh, things are all settled now. How much did it go? How much did it get? Oh, I don't know. I got, I'm sure there is a big NDA on that. Mm. But I mean, whatever the photographer was going for, yeah. <laughs> I imagine that's what he got. How yeah, much it be? Like forty quid, something like that. Forty dollars. Uh, yeah. Well, I think I think originally he was suing LeBron for the amount that LeBron made from the image, you know, through Instagram and all the social media. Yeah, stuff. Yeah, 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 so yeah. I mean, that's going to be pretty hard to prove, yeah. but. I'm, I'm sure it's at least six digits, but at it's, least. It's one in the eye for all the dicks that think they can just yep. willy-nilly. I mean, I, 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 I can kind of see what the celebrities are thinking. I mean, this is something that's gone on and on and on back and forth in the past, you know, where celebrities feel that they have a right to use that image because the image uh, is of them. Yeah. But you have to understand that it's a copyrighted piece of material that mm. somebody else owns. Mm -hmm. well, you have and, even though, you know, it's it's not like you can you can post up a movie that you starred in on your own personal website and let other people look at it, watch this movie just because you're in it. You know, Columbia Pictures or Sony Pictures or MGM or whoever is going to you know come down on you for that. Yeah, or so this is kind of the same, you know, just a smaller scale. It's, just, it's the same thing. Well, even with stills, you know, I can't put up stills that I take. You can try to agree that. Well, you can. that's that's. A I know it's different. That's, I know it's different, but we're into the area of what we can show and what we. That's can't what. Do. That's what the production company or, you know, the TV channel has on the photographer. No, I know, I know. You know they've saying. implemented. Yeah. They've implemented those sort of usage rights with as as being uh totally exclusive and uh non-promotional yeah. you know so you still hold the copyright yeah but you just can't do anything with it you know you can't use it for promotions you can't really you're not supposed to put it on your website a lot of times yeah and so the copyright's kind of like just looks like yeah you. i mean at that point it's almost like you, you know you've been strangulated this much why not just you know take the entire copyright too while you're at it give me some extra i can do it give me there's some extra dosh do yeah. yeah um that's interesting maybe it wasn't well it, it, it is interesting i mean because i mean in the past year since kobe bryant passed away yeah i mean lebron has really been the face of basketball yeah and he's really be come to the forefront in the way of charity and stuff, you know, he has his charity? own schools. Charity? 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 Charity. Charity. C-H-A-R-I-T-Y. Charity. Charity. So he has his own schools where he lets underprivileged, you know, kids go to school and, you know, everything's paid for and all that kind of stuff. He's, yeah. You know, he's giving back he's to good the community guy. and stuff. Yeah. He's a good guy, but the fact that, you know, something like this, where he just doesn't understand the law mm -hmm. and what protects photographers and artists, you know, it's a good thing. And he should, you know, he should understand that, but he, oh maybe, well, he, he, maybe, didn't. he maybe understands a bit better now. Yeah. It's a tiny little thing in his wallet, checkbook, whatever. No, I'm sure it's not. It'll soon be. It'll, it'll be made up. It's probably not even anything to do. It'll be just some deal. Just it'll wisp itself away. That's What's your first story, Chris? Was that historical or was that... That was legal. That was legal. Well, I suppose it was history because it didn't happen today. Is that right? Is that my understanding of history? Yeah, it could be. At least I grasped something. That um, comment you just made about yeah. history? It's history? That's history now. Jeez. 
Is isn't that funny how that works. God. Whenever I was taking acid, Rob, that would have really confused me. That would have, I'd have been pondering that one for quite a while in my Hold own on. head. What I'm saying right now isn't history, but it is now. God. It's the pause, isn't it? It's the break. <laughs> See, what do you mean? Ian, don't. It's Cheech and Chong. It's, no, it's not. It's the Fabulous Furry Freak Brothers. <laughs> Uh, no, no. no, it's Cheech and Chong driving in a van that's parked on the side of the road. Yeah. Do you remember that? Yeah, it's just not going in. And they get pulled over? Yeah. <laughs> but they're already they're parked. Already parked. Yeah. I, can't, I can't pull any farther over, man. I'm already, I'm already on the side, yeah, man. I have a Cheech and Chong moustache this week, Rob. Mm -hmm. In real life or just on your Zoom meetings? No, in real life. Have you tried it on your Zoom meeting yet? Yeah, 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 yeah. Put the little goatee on with the beret and everything. Oh, no, I didn't know you could do that. Oh, yeah. Oh, really? Well, well obviously, you know, you heard about the cat. Yeah, I liked the cat. It was funny. The, the, the cat guy who was in court or whatever, the prosecutor, and he yeah. had the cat face on. So I was going to put the red beret on. I didn't know you could or, do it. Be careful with the berets over here, Rob. Yeah, that's what Olivia said. You lucky you didn't do the red beret. Yeah, yeah, you could be in <laughs> awful trouble. You could be in awful trouble. You'd yeah. look like a member of the Santanders. Nobody needs that, Rob. Mm -hmm. um, my first story, Rob, is about the nearest tree. I just love this little rat run that I'm in at the minute. Going around the houses, looking at stuff, finding stuff. Do you new. Rat? No, I'm just saying. I'm doing so. I'm doing very similar things. I'm looking at quite similar stuff, but it always takes me an adventure. You know what I'm saying? There's a little door mm -hmm. out of it, and you go out, and you kind of go around. That's a really shit analogy. Um, but anyway, um, American, so or sorry, Nearest Truth. I was saying Nearest Truth, okay, and mm -hmm. it is episode 149. Wow. 149. That's just something else. And this one is 148.36 minutes long that's good isn't okay. it yeah so it's a good it's a good a good yarn and it's with Paul Sheik um, and it is just brilliant Paul Sheik's um, a, uh, a, a, a a publisher okay um, for TBW books um, and I'll put links up while I'm going to talk about TBW books in a wee second um, but I, this is the opening opening line. Okay, if you want to, if there's something that's going to grab your attention. I think these this this what gets me. A native. Okay, Paul Sheik is an artist um, and the force behind one of America's finest publishing houses, TBW Books. A native of Wisconsin, Wisconsin, um, Paul is per, um, particularly working class stock, which drives his, his efforts with a no nonsense approach and a Midwestern work ethic that is hard to keep up, up with. This is a point of muted pride for both of us. What do you think of that? Wow, that's deep. It's deep, isn't it? You know, it's not, you, you know, it's, you know what's going on there. There's no shit. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And the conversation is reflected. Um, it's just, it's really cool. Brad does go on to say that there was a bit of um, a bit of a sound issue. You'd know all about that, Rob. Um, uh, with the uh, there was a bit of an audio problem, but it was um, it was uh, rain in the form of ambient rain in his office. Well, that'd be nice. It was nice. That's what they said, which nice, is kind of nice and relaxing. He, he says it's kind of compelling, and it's kind of compelling. Maybe that's what we should do here. Maybe we should just have some ambient rain on the sound, just like falling behind us as we're talking. No, that's wind, Chris. That's wind. I know. You, yeah. you know the difference between rain and wind? Yeah, but I like, I love the sound of that. Love it. Puts me to sleep. That a big long burrito Just got fart. There. You can't say, you can't say F A R T, on the radio. <laughs> Fuck no. You can't say that either. You can't say no. <laughs> Rob, it is. It's 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 one point or one forty eight thirty six. You have to listen to. Um, I'm really into um, listening to publishers at the so moment. So it's a podcast. Yeah, it's, it's a podcast. It's yeah, 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 it's a podcast. Um, do you listen to podcasts, do you? Um, yeah. That's a strange thing to what, ask. What, what, are, <laughs> what, are, what, are your, what are your favorite podcasts? Did you just cough in my ear again? Yeah. <coughs> <coughs> I've got to... Fuck! 
to click off. What are your favorite podcasts? What do you like listening to, Chris? Um, Nearest Truth is my favorite yeah. by far. Um, yeah. Weekly Dose, close second. Very different type of animal, though. <laughs> if the Nearest Truth is a panther, okay, a panther, a dual panther, a schizophrenic panther, let's say, a panther with duality, okay. The, the, weekly, the weekly dose would be an earthworm? Well, I wouldn't even... If a, an, an earthworm had humour, I suppose, maybe. I was thinking more of a hummingbird that had never really learned to hum or fly or eat nectar. Oh, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Very, very pretty to look at. But most things you would tire very quickly. This isn't going to be a one minute forty eight point three six. <laughs> so seriously, like, what do you listen to for podcasts? What, what do you mean? That's what I listen to. You mean? Oh, you mean like other? I know you listen to tons of ones, like serious ones. No, I don't. That, that's me. This is me. I I read books, and I listen to. Um, I listen to uh, you G can't Brad. read. You can't read. I've read Age of Eleven, but it doesn't mean I can't read it. You're, you're always telling me you can't read. I read real slow. <laughs> I read real slow, Rob. Real slow, like Rob. Rob. Real slow, Rob. like Rob. I'm reading up. I'm reading up. English. I'm reading up. I read real slow, like I'm reading up. I'm writing up an application for a PhD. I've got my masters. I can function, but it's. At a very earthwormy pace. But at least I try. I give it my all. You do. You do. When you're in these circumstances, you must... The only way is up, as Yad would say. Yaz would say. Um, the next one, okay. Go back a week to 148 and you have Clint Woodhouse, another publisher. And he's wearing a t-shirt that says there's no money in books. Which I can like. Wow. Well, there's no That's money. That's a statement. Yeah, there's no money in books. You know what I mean? There's no money in books. Oh, what's happened there? Oh, we're into it. I moved my cup and it came on. Get away. It's beautiful. The both of them are just an education. Um, I'm doing a photo book course in Belfast Exposed. Um, so I've been... Yes, I saw some of your notes. They look interesting. It looks really interesting. Click into those notes, Rob. Super duper stuff. Oh, it's not. I didn't pay. You know, I shouldn't be looking at your notes. As a colleague, Rob, you can do whatever you wish. No, no. Absolutely. I wouldn't. I wouldn't want. I wouldn't. No, I didn't pay for it. You know, it's not paid knowledge. I'll pass those on to you no, as a it's pal. Cool. It's, cool. it's cool. Do you see Martin Parr on it? Do you see Martin Parr's on it? Yes, I saw Martin Parr's face. Do you know why? <laughs> do you know why? Because you love Martin Parr, you're the you're the president of the Belfast chapter of the Martin Parr fan club. That's a good idea. Actually, I quite like the way you phrased that in a Hell's Angel type way. <laughs> yeah, you can get you can get leather jackets. You can have like big winged eagle, and you have Martin Parr's face instead of you know the love head it. of the eagle up there. It would be that picture of him mm. dressed as a shark, him and in, him inside the shark outfit. Actually, I'd make his eyes a wee bit boss. Give him a bit more interest. Um, it's on there because I'm not bitter, and he did write uh, the uh, history of the photo book, and it's a, it's a, it's something we had to talk about at some point. So, but what I will say, if I can talk again, is um, this book here, okay, mm -hmm. that I'm holding up right now, and it's the uh, Understanding Photo Books: The Form and Content of the Photographic Book by Jorg or Jurg Kohlberg, a must for anybody. Is it Jurg or Jorg? It's J O two dots on the top of it. R G. York. York. I thought that. Yeah, I thought it was York. I'm trying really hard for my pronunciation. Um, so You're doing good. So You're doing look, good. You're so, so much better than a year ago, dude. You're, oh my God. I know. So much better. But do you know why I had no confidence, Rob? It was a lack of confidence. Uh, well, confidence is public everything. Public speaking. Public speaking. But it's by Rutledge, um, and it is how much online. I don't know, you can get it at various prices, used for 24 or something, new 40 something. It is the best book about, well, it's the best book about photo books, but at the minute it is, I'm just reading it flat out. 
flat out reading that. I'm sorry, is this the Martin Parr one? No, 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 it's a history of the photo book. Is that is interesting enough? Or is this it's the it's the understanding photo books. Rutledge. It's the Rutledge. Good old Yorg. It's incredible. Oh yes, yeah, sorry, Yorg. It yeah, is yeah, we... incredible. Everything you need to know about putting together a photo book. Everything you need to know. Guess who's speaking next Great. week? Guess who's come to speak next week? To the guys. What, in your workshop? Yeah. Who? Guest speakers. I have got Claire Gahalaher. Oh, that's nice. Mm. Mm-hmm. That's, that's a coup. Great. That's a coup. Or I should that's say, great, Dr. Claire Gallagher. She's a doctor of photography? Well, no, she no, she was wearing a stethoscope last time. So I saw the whenever we were at the golf course doing um, sledging. Can she take that that, that glass plate out of my ass? I would say she could probably she would probably be really good at booting it up further up your ass. <laughs> so Claire, as you know, has just done the um, we talked about that a while back. Second shift, fantastic book um, as part of her PhD, um, and she's going to come in and talk a bit about process and a bit about meaning and all the. All the stuff around it, context and narrative, and all the stuff that's that's interesting. Um, and also, um, I really wanted to get her to talk about. It. it sounds crap, but it's actually quite. I find it quite interesting. Her dust jacket. There's a story in there. Well, I'll tell you about that again. Lessons. Her dusty jacket. Lesson. Who talked at my last one, Rob? Matthew Finn. Oh. You know what I'm going to say. Listen to you. Education, so education. So how, how long is your workshop? Three hours. On Zoom. Mother. Long. I wish it was an hour Seriously? Yeah. Because hmm. you have guest speakers doing the talk. No, the no, no. It's the, this, the guest speaker comes in last week. This is it's three hours because it's a weighty subject. It's not something you can skip through. You have to talk about narrative and context and, and on sexy stuff like um, the language of the book. The history of the book. There's stuff to be talked about. See, I just get down to brass tacks. I, I tell the students what they need to know. I know, but... I they, <laughs> understand, they understand it. Did you just cough at me Yeah, because you made me fucking laugh. <coughs> brass tacks, bollocks. You're just right, Rob. But I, uh, we are brass tacking, I have to say. But there's sometimes brass tacks. If you open the packet just a little bit and let them gently pour out, that's what I'm doing. You just open the lid and you just fire it down. And then you make I poured it on the on floor. Exactly. And then turned off the lights. Oh, you're so And sexy. then told everybody, fire! To get them to run around. Let them run out. Oh, but you, you didn't get them to take your shoes off and a Bruce Willis, that's what I did on. No, you're not allowed in the house without your shoes off. Really? You always take off your shoes. Really? Absolutely. In your house? It's, it's rude to wear your shoes in the house. No? Yeah, you're right, because look, this is what I wear in my house. Dirty. No. Dirty. I've got this. Dirty. I've got the, look, there's still a Put bit of... Put your shoes outside. There's still, a, there's still a bit of blood. It's dirty. I hurt myself a while ago and there's still a bit of blood dirty. in mine. I must clean that. It looks clatty when I've done that in the four lockdown. Blood. Yeah. <coughs> Back Get the nose. bleach out. Stop coughing in my ear. I'm not coughing. I'm not coughing. I'm coughing because you made me... A, because you made me laugh because you're so sarcastic. <laughs> go, go and buy that book. Go, go buy a litre of bleach. Clean and off your shoes. Join the next Cops photo book. They'll never, find, they'll never find the DNA. You can't, you know, D that's what bleach is for. Join the next photo. Not you. Well, you can if you wish. You can come in for free, Rob. Nobody would care. Um, come and join the photo book class. Nobody cares about me? No, it's just people love you. They would be delighted if you came. A guy of your good standing. I'm sore, Rob. I've been painting all day. In fact, I'm covered in paint. I haven't even checked my face. I could be very painty. I, I always love that. I love watching people paint. Mm -hmm. And how do you end up with paint all over you? Well, I'm just a, I'm just a mess. You're putting paint on the wall. How do you get paint on you? Because I'm not... I think I have dyspraxia or something. I'm very, very clumsy. I know people probably find that am amazingly difficult to understand, but I am clumsy. I'm a clumsy clot. If, so, Chris... Yes. What, tell me your next story, because we're flying through this, Rob. Yeah, this is it. This is it. This is the last story. Go. Cool. Did you hear what happened in the United States this week about in upstate New York? No. Dude, this is the best 
thing since Vivian Meyer. No. <laughs> Dude. Oh, I did. Guy, I did. He bought, a, he bought a place and upstairs was the... Yes. Jesus. He bought a house and upstairs was a boarded off attic. And in the attic was a hundred year old photography studio. Jesus Christ. It's a dream, isn't it? Yeah. With equipment, negatives, prints everything that's the house paid and for the big yeah and the yeah yeah he's already you know he's hired a proper auction house mm. to do the appraisal mm -hmm. And, mm -hmm. and everything he has a photographic print of susan b anthony no he hasn't so it was in the <laughs> is that what was in the in the cash in the hole he found yep. that the photographer <clears throat> that had worked in that space had, I guess, photographed a lot of suffragettes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he photographed uh, a couple more. I can't remember their names, but the big one, obviously, is Susan B. Anthony. So, I mean, that's, geez, dude, that's that, amazing. That, that, he, that's your house paid for. That's there. your house with one image. Yeah, so, he didn't, yeah. go, he didn't go look. I did, Rob, I went to rent a house once. I was hitching a lift and get picked up by people who were um, scallion growers. And my ex and I, they, they, we said we were looking for somewhere to live. They took us to their house in Port Rush. They were had, it was, and they said we could rent it for six months, they were gonna make it into apartments. And we went in and it was brilliant, it was beautiful. It was old, right in the seafront, really nice, really mm -hmm. rickety, lovely back, big brick garage, like old brick garage at the back. Upstairs, the top, not the, the attic, the top part, the door, boarded up. Well, we opened it. And what did we find upstairs? Mm -hmm. What? Wallpaper, scraped wallpaper and blood. Scraped, the wallpaper had been Get out of scraped. Here. I swear to God, Rob, I swear. We didn't move in. Scared the bejesus out of us. Scared the bejesus out of us. It's now apartments, <laughs> they knocked down. Scraped, the wallpaper had been scraped like a, like a human had been scraping, trying to get out and blood. Their fingernails had probably come off. I should have told the police about that, shouldn't I? That could have been the scene of a... You should have, yeah, yeah. Gee whiz, why didn't I? Because I was, I, was, I was stoned all the then time. Then you would have been a stoolie. I would have been a stoolie. A, the stone stoolie. The stone. And you know what happened? So tell me, Chris. Oh. If you look on the back of your camera right now, Chris, what, what does it say? How much time do you have left? Oh, shit. Um, it says... I don't know. I can't see Rob through my glasses. It says... 20 seconds. No, I've got a minute and a half. Let me tell you the next bit of that story if I can, just really quickly. Okay, quick, yeah. Just after that, we left that house and walked down. And there was a camper van, a Volkswagen camper van parked about 20 metres on the seafront, Lansdowne Crescent. Two Australians in it. They, we kind of, hi, hi, how are you? Do you want to be in for a cup of tea? Went in for a cup of tea. What did they do? They gave us some weed. What happened? I, my ex had to phone my mum and she had to come and put me in the boot of the car. I was completely off my tits. I needed somewhere really dark and calm with my mum nearby. Gone. Away with the fairies. No idea what, what they did to me. <laughs> Chris. Yes, Rob. It's past. It's all history now. You think? You think? It's in the... It's in the past. It's all history. So. It's in the boot. I'm so Rob. Thank you very much, Chris. Rob, are you going to send him today? I, did it all I, taste? Dude, it's, it just flew by. It's a day for it's a day for staying by. stuff. If you want to say it, today's the day. Valentine's Day. Yeah, exactly. Happy Valentine's, dude. Mm, it's not quite I love you, but it is definitely getting closer every week. You're the best. It doesn't count, Rob. I love you. Don't squeeze you. I'm going to hold.